Howdy, howdy, students. So I want to show you how to solve a problem like this. I'm not going to go through all the parts, but I'm going to go through the most difficult parts. Um, so we have this acropad. It's 80 kilograms. It's being held by rope one and rope two. Um, the two toughest parts about this problem are solving for the tension in rope one and then the tension in rope two. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So for um, this problem, this is the free body diagram for the acrobat. We have the force of tension from rope one. We have the force of tension from rope two. We have the force of gravity or the weight on uh, the acrobat. And then we can break because uh, force of tension two is at a 63 degree angle from the horizontal. We can break this force up into its X or horizontal and Y vertical components. So um, I did that, and we've got FTX2 and FTY2 for the horizontal component of FT2 and the y, uh, vertical component of uh, FT2. Um, note, because, and it's not drawn perfectly to scale, but uh, it's at rest, so that must mean that the horizontal components are uh, going to be equivalent, or forces in a component is equivalent, and that also must mean that the vertical must balance out and be equivalent and opposite. So in the y direction, we'll start there because we can figure that out from the force of gravity. Um, we have the force of gravity downward. Uh, so it's negative plus the, uh, the tension uh, component in the y direction uh, of rope 2 upward. And that's equal to 0 because it's at rest. So then I could solve for FTY2 and I get that is equal to the force of gravity, or it's equal to mass times little g, which is 9.8, uh, times the mass, which is 80 kilograms. So I get that this right here, FTY2, is 784 newtons. Now, I can use that information in order to help me figure out rope 2. So I know that sine of any angle, um, and not just 63, is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, and I know here the sine of 63 is going to be FTY2 over the hypotenuse, which is FT2. Um, now I can solve for FT2 by getting it out of the denominator first, by multiplying it on both sides. That cancels that. I get FTY2 equals FT2 times sine of the angle 63. Um, now I want to get this all by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 63 degrees, um, sine of 63 degrees, and I get FT2 equals um, FTY2, the vertical component, divided by sine of 63 degrees. Uh, I already solved for FTY2 with 784 newtons. And the sine of 63 is a number as well. Sine of 63 is 0 0.89100. We'll stop there. So I'm going to take 784 divided by my answer. And I get that the force of tension on rope 2 is equal to 879.9 newtons. So I get that, and that is this force here, 879.9 newtons. So <clears throat> I know my overall force, and I want to know uh, FT1. Well, to solve that, I have to figure out the forces in the x direction, which are going to be FT1, uh, which is going to be negative, plus the... Uh, horizontal component of FT2, FTX2. Again, they're going to equal zero because it's at rest. I solve for FTTX2, um, which is equal to, I add this over, to FTT1 or FT1. Um, I know this component because um, it is the adjacent side. Um, cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, or 
the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent side. So if I know the adjacent, or if I know the hypotenuse, um, and I know the angle, I can find the adjacent side. So I can put, replace FTX2 with FT2 times cosine of 63. That's going to be equal to FT1. So I have FT2, which is 879. I'll make this up. 879.9 newtons times cosine of 63 degrees. It's FT1. Put that in a calculator. 879.9 times cosine of 63 is FT1, which equals 399.4 newtons. And that's that force. So hopefully that was a little bit helpful. That is 399.4 newtons here. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know.